What's up guys, my name is Ace, and today I wanted to talk kind of just about my general feelings on Black Ops 3. What I like about it, what I feel needs to be changed and tuned, and just everything like that. I feel like it's, it's about time that we do that because it's been out for two months now, and this is going to be sort of my initial review of Black Ops 3. Let's get into it. Alright guys, so this isn't going to be like a super structured commentary, it's going to be just kind of free-flowing, whatever pops into my mind is what I'm going to talk about, and I'm going to try to maintain some sort of structure to it, but it's not scripted or anything like that. So the first thing that I wanted to mention is I am still absolutely loving this game. Usually by now with a Call of Duty, like by the time Christmas hits, I've kind of hit my initial little burnout phase where I, I got through the honeymoon phase, I was really excited to play it at first, and then I played it so much that it's just like, okay, I, I need to take a little bit of a break from it, or I'm just going to start playing it less and less, I'm going to dial back my playtime. I haven't hit that yet. Every time I wake up, I'm still like, yes, I get to play Call of Duty today, I'm so excited. I, I really want to hop in this game, I've got challenges I want to complete, I'm working on Dark Matter challenges for Xbox One, and I'm just excited to jump on this game still to this day. And I think that's saying something about the game. There's no really game-breaking issue that makes me think twice about wanting to play the game. Uh, and a lot of the other games, it's like, I kind of want to play, but I'm just going to get noob tubed all day. So I, I don't know if I really want to hop on or skill based matchmaking so strong. I, I really just want to relax a little bit. I don't want to be 100% alert or I'd love to mess around with some different things, but I can't because strong skill based matchmaking or just whatever that issue might have been in a previous Call of Duty game. I'm not getting any of those issues yet. I'm not I'm not thinking about should I play Black Ops 3? Oh no, the gun balance sucks. I'll only I'll have to use the same old gun every single time. I'm not experiencing that and I think that is an excellent sign so far. Getting into some more specifics, let's talk about map design. I really enjoy Black Ops 3's map design. It's very similar to Black Ops 2's map design, like it's a Treyarch sort of map design, and it's basically a very simple three-lane map design with lots of cover-based movement. So it's a lot of moving from cover to cover, controlling power positions that have great cover, but all those power positions have great counters as well. It's very strategic and tactical in my mind because, like I said, every piece of cover has a strategic counter or several different counters, ways to flank around. There's lots of uh, different flank routes without being too chaotic and scrambled, like a lot of the ghost maps were, in my opinion. A lot of people will disagree with this, a lot of people really prefer more open and unplanned sort of map design where everything's just kind of thrown around and, and it's, I guess, more realistic. But personally, I prefer this because it feels like I'm on uh, more of a balanced, like, competitive sort of stage and, and everything's there for a reason. And I, I just enjoy that. I enjoy the, the tactics that go around that. It's kind of like a chessboard to me and I really like that. Next, I want to talk about gun balance. I'm very happy with the gun balance in Advanced Warfare, or in Black Ops 3. Wow, not Advanced Warfare. Not happy with it in Advanced Warfare, even now. But in Black Ops 3, the gun balance is the best gun balance I feel that we've seen in a launch from Call of Duty ever. Like, at launch, even some of the better balanced games, like what people would consider to be the better balanced uh, guns, they typically weren't that balanced at the beginning of the game and it took them like several months to get the proper tuning down till we had a balanced game. Right at launch with Black Ops 3, I feel the gun balance was awesome. Now they have been making a bunch of tweaks and I like that. I, I'm fine with tweaks being made. I think there still are tweaks that are going to be made and that may need to be made. Uh, that's just based on all the data that they get from these guns. But overall, every single gun in this game is viable. And there's not a single gun that's like the best gun in the game, like hands down the best gun in the game. You can ask a hundred people that play Call of Duty all the time what the best gun in the game is, and you're not going to get like 70 or 80% saying one gun is the best gun in the game. I think you'd see a pretty good mix of people with different opinions on that. Now that's not to say that there aren't like better guns that are obviously on the higher tier, and then there's other guns that are just kind of average to below average, but there's no overpowered sort of guns in this game. That's just my opinion. Some of you guys might be like, oh my god, no, this gun is so overpowered. But for me, I can use any gun in the game and I find it to be very viable as long as you adapt your playstyle accordingly. Another thing that I'm really enjoying so far, this is again my personal opinion from my experience, is the connections have been great. I know a lot of you guys are going to be like, no, not for me. Connections have been awful. 
It's just terrible. And I understand not everybody's connection is the same. It depends on your region, depends on your ISP, depends on so many factors. But for me, so far, connections have been awesome. I've had very few games that have been absolutely terrible connection wise. They do happen every now and then, but that's to be expected with pretty much any online game that you play, especially ones that don't have 100% dedicated servers all the time. But still, it's been quite good for me and I'm very happy with the way the connections have been turning out for me. The next thing that I really like about this game is the variety in the game and not only the gameplay styles that you can use because of the map design, it seems like every map allows you to play in whatever way you want or at least pretty much whatever way you want aside from maybe like Nuketown or something like that. But you can you can usually adapt your playstyle to play on any of that. You can use any gun in the game you want and still be viable. You can mix up your perks a little bit. I mean, there are some definite uh, power perks in this game that are are like the clear winners in their tier, at least for certain playstyles. But you can mess around and use pretty much any perk you want. Uh, attachments, you can also mix up quite a bit, although I've kind of settled into my, my default attachments for certain guns, but that's bound to happen. And I also really like that every game mode seems to be really viable in this game. I really enjoy playing Demolition. I really enjoy playing Domination. I enjoy playing Safeguard. I enjoy playing Uplink. I can play so many different game modes in this game and have fun with it. Whereas when I look back to Advanced Warfare, if I played anything other than Domination, I just wasn't enjoying myself. I found it was too difficult to earn score streaks. Like if you were going for the higher score streaks, it was too difficult to earn them in a lot of the game modes. Or it was just not an enjoyable, like the maps didn't, ju the maps just didn't flow in an enjoyable way for certain game modes. And domination for me was just the one game mode where every map seemed to play pretty well, and score streaks were relatively e easy to earn, and things just felt fair and balanced. With Black Ops 3, I love that I can branch out, play different game modes, and enjoy myself on every single one of them. So there we go, I've kind of praised the game a lot right there uh, and kind of talked about a lot of things that I love about the game. Now I just wanted to share a few things that I feel need to be tweaked or changed, maybe completely overhauled. Just a few things that I feel this game needs to make it just that little bit better in my books. So first off, I was just thinking about perks here off the top of my head. The one perk that I feel could use some tuning is awareness. Now, Awareness is a very powerful perk in the hands of somebody that, first off, has a good headset, and second, can use that, that sound information properly. A lot of people, they have good headsets and they can hear the footsteps, but it's just confusing. They don't know how to deal with it. But if you're somebody that has great minimap awareness and everything, and you know how to, how to interpret those footstep sounds, Awareness is a little bit on the powerful side. And that's coming from somebody that uses Awareness a lot. So it's not coming from somebody that's complaining that I'm constantly being heard all the time. It's more so... I use awareness and I kind of feel bad sometimes because it's like, oh my god, I heard that guy coming from a mile away. And I know it has the counter, which is dead silence, but still, I feel like awareness could be just toned down a little bit. Just a little bit. Another thing that I wanted to mention was for attachments, the stock attachment on assault rifles and LMGs. I feel this needs a bit of a buff. Now having said that, I don't feel it needs to go all the way to where it was in Black Ops 2. I feel like the stock attachment was kind of a crutch attachment in Black Ops 2 for assault rifles and LMGs, and it made those guns way too viable against SMGs up close and shotguns and everything like that. So I don't think it should be that extreme, I just want to be able to move a little bit faster while aiming down sight with the stock attachment on both assault rifles and LMGs. Another thing that's really game mode specific that I'd like to mention is Safeguard. I just feel Safeguard, I love the mode, I absolutely love playing it, I feel it needs a little bit of a score boost in some way. And by score boost, I mean just your ability to earn score streaks more effectively. As it is right now at 50 score per kill, and there's really not much objective score to go around, I feel it's just too difficult to earn any streaks higher than like a Hellstorm missile or a Hardened Sentry or something like that. Anything beyond that, it's going to be very rare that you'll actually earn one. It's not like I can earn a Wraith every game while playing Safeguard, whereas if I play Domination or Team Deathmatch, I can usually earn a Wraith every game without even having to worry about it too much. So I'd like to see a little bit of an increase in score for Safeguard. Having said that, I feel like that game mode could potentially be ruined if it's a complete score streak fest. So I wouldn't necessarily like double the score per kill to 100. I think that's what it was in the beta and it was a score streak fest. But something like a 75 score per kill or just make it so if you're anywhere within a large radius of that robot, 
you're getting 100 score per kill or something along those lines. I just wish there was a little bit more room to earn score within that game mode. All right, so this commentary has already gone on a little bit long, but there's one more thing I wanted to mention that I feel needs a little bit of reworking, and that is the team balancing system in this game. So as it is right now, just in case you guys aren't aware, if you are the best player in the lobby, and just keep in mind this is assuming there is no party involved whatsoever, if you're the best player in the lobby, it seems like it always gives you like the bottom three or bottom four players on your team, and they drag you down the entire team, the entire game. And this isn't something that you just see now and then, and it's just a confirmation bias. You see this all the time. If you go on Reddit, if you go on the Black Ops 3 subreddit, people are constantly complaining about this. And this happens so frequently, and far too frequently in my mind. If I jump into a game solo, most of the time, I have players that are going like 0 and 30, or 2 and 20, or something like that on my team. And on the other team, everyone's doing like average. They're not amazing players usually, but... They're doing average and at least they're helping their team out and i keep getting weighed down by these anchors and it essentially feels like most games that i play solo i'm playing like 2v6 so it's me and another guy that's doing okay with the rest of our teammates that are doing just terrible against an entire team of people that are doing all right so i just find this system could use some reworking and i'm sure a lot of people agree with me on this I still prefer this system to skill-based matchmaking, or at least really strict skill-based matchmaking in public matches. So don't get me wrong there, I don't want to see skill-based matchmaking return to replace this. I just feel like it could use a little bit of tweaking because it is getting kind of annoying every time I play solo, basically losing every single game I try to play, and there's nothing I can do about it. I try the hardest I can, and I usually do very well, I just can't win a game because I've got three teammates that are actually seemingly helping the other team by feeding them streaks. So there we have it. I'd like to know what you guys think in the comment section below. What's your opinion on Black Ops 3 so far? Do you love it? Do you hate it? Are there things that you want changed or you feel that really need to be changed? Just let me know in the comment section below. I'd love to hear what the general community is is sort of thinking about it at this point in the game's life cycle. If you enjoyed the video, a like rating is always appreciated and don't forget to subscribe for more if you haven't already. I'll talk to you guys next time. At least you fought like you got a pair.